but better late than never. Welcome. It's my favorite. Two episodes in a week? Fucking Anton Lander. Oh I my really like the goodness. Bag milk. Yes. This is Ceases. Uh oh. Ceases. What's up? Ceases. Yeah! Ceases. Mm hmm. Tyler, your rem check is so fucking sexy. Ceases. Fucking Anton Lander. It's my favorite. Oh, better late than never. This is so fucking sexy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Better late than never. Episode 14, two episode week. Who doesn't like that? Got the first one out of the way. Go download, subscribe, check that one out. Recap the trade deadline. We're going to do a little bit of recap again here on episode 14, but we're going to move on quickly because i got a lot to get to. I've got a new segment that I want to get to. I've got a new sponsor on the podcast. Oh, no. i got a lot to get to. So that's why I'm going to start off by saying, hey, Arcadia, I love you. Do you know that? I love you very much. Arcadia Brewing. Go check them out at Arcadia Brewing. Uh, Arcadia Brew Co. on Twitter, Arcadia Brewing Co. on Instagram, or if you're not on the socials, go on over to ArcadiaYeg.com. ArcadiaYeg.com. That's where it's at. That's where you can get some gear. Get yourself some merch. Look as handsome as I do right now. Get yourself some Whistling Pig. As always, podcasts don't start until I got a Whistling Pig sitting beside me. Got it? Of course. Arcadia. Check them out. It's time for a visit. I was talking to Jared and Sales. Sales guy Jared. If you don't know the behind the scenes folks at Nation HQ, it's my goal to introduce you to them. So I was talking to Jared and he said, Hey, what would you think about doing a event, potentially doing an event, an invite only event at Arcadia? And I said, Listen, that spot's cool. I haven't been upstairs yet. I want to see what that room's like. I want to drink beers. I want to eat food. I want to have a good time. So does Arcadia. Sound like a spot for that? Of course they do. Of course they do. And now, the plug's out of the way. It's time to get to the news. Busy, busy week here in Edmonton. We had the trade deadline on Monday. Again, go back and listen to the reaction episode. I've had a couple of days to sit and think about what's going on. We're going to get to everything that has happened since deadline day. Lost to the Colorado Avalanche. Lost to the Dallas Stars. We are going to get to all of that. But first, I got to welcome a brand new sponsor on the podcast. If you've known me long enough, or if you know me at all, or if you've listened to this podcast or any of the other podcasts I've been on, you'll know that I love Manscaped. After lighting the lamp, hit the showers with this all-in-one skin and hair care kit that covers you from head to toe. Literally covers you from head to toe. Manscaped is your trusted source below the waist, and now trust them with the rest. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com using the promo code BETTER20. B-E-T-T-E-R-20. BETTER20 and get 20% off your order, free shipping, everything you need. If you know me, you know I'm a person. I'm a guy. I loved freshly clipped beans. That's what I'm presenting. That's what I'm putting out in the world. I recommend you do the same. Again, manscaped.com. Check it out. Better 20. Better 20. That's your promo code. Use that. This is a trial run, essentially, for Manscaped in the old Better Late Than Never podcast. And because you guys have supported the show so much, I'm asking you to do it one more time. I'm asking you to do it one more time. Good? Good. So if you listen to the Monday episode, you already know that the Oilers traded for Brett Kulak and Derek Broussard. Since then, they both those boys have picked their numbers with the Edmonton Oilers. Brett Kulak will wear number 27 for the boys. He becomes the 15th player to wear the number. The last time somebody wore that number was, do you know? 
Do you know who it was? That is arguably the worst drum roll I could have found. I was talking about needing a drum roll the other day, and that's the one I found. (laughs) All right. So the last Edmonton Oiler to wear number 27 was Mike Green. Mike Green. How many of you had that on your bingo boards? Nobody. Nobody. Before that, of course, Milan Lucic wore it. uh, Derek Broussard, not a penalty killer. Not a penalty killer. Wait a minute. Who are you? He will wear number 16. Now, for a lot of Oilers fans, well, not a lot, some Oilers fans, the fact that Broussard is coming into town wearing 16 had some people go, huh, isn't there another guy in the organization that currently wears number 16? Well, yes, there is. If you've been wondering why Tyler Benson is having his number taken, you're not alone. You're not alone. Despite the fact that Benson has only played 36 NHL games, he has one goal, two assists, three points. Many of us were wondering, hey, what happened there? Was it like a baseball thing where maybe Derek Broussard show, uh, you know, sent over a watch? Maybe a charcuterie board? Maybe an edible arrangement and said, hey, man, I heard you wearing 16, but I've been in the NHL for 936 games. Let me have it. You know what? Benson, probably a good guy, said, you can have it, man. You can have it. It's only a number. It's only 16. It's only 16 to me. We'll see what happens actually there. But both of those players are set to make their Oilers debut tomorrow. That's against the San Jose Sharks. As I'm recording, it's 4 o'clock today on Wednesday. I'm excited to see how they play in their first game. Kulak my opinion, is going to be an upgrade on the defense on the left side. I know he's going to start off on the third pairing. That's what uh, Jay Woodcroft said, at least preliminarily. That's, that word doesn't exist. At least to start. And I wouldn't be surprised if he moves up. If Brett Kulak can actually move up and play, maybe fight above his weight class just a little bit and push Duncan Keith down, hey, all of a sudden, now we've got something going. The more interesting one for me is Derek Broussard. Where does he slot in? Where does he fit? Right now, I would have him pegged at fourth line center, but I haven't seen a practice with the boys. Today was a CBA-mandated day off, according to the Oilers' Twitter account. So we didn't get to see the boys in their line rushes with the new guys in town. But I'm going to say 4C, maybe. Maybe a little opportunity to bump up to 3C, or uh, th- third line, maybe on the wing. Maybe he takes some draws along with Nugent Hopkins. He's a plus 50% face-off guy. I'm really interested to see what happens tomorrow when these team, when the boys actually get a first look at what the new guys have in store for them. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is very, very exciting to me. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, after missing the last chunk of time with the shoulder injury, he is coming back. Listen, I'm not going to say that Ryan Nugent Hopkins is going to be the solution for all the power play issues that we've having lately, but he's certainly going to help. He's certainly going to help. I think that having Nuge back is going to help the PK. Struggling. It's going to help the power play. Struggling. And it's going to allow us to go back to that line that was so effective while he was playing, while he was running. It was Fogel, it was Nuge, and it was Derek Ryan. Now, do you maybe put Broussard on that line somewhere? Maybe. Maybe. I'm really excited to see what Woody's going to do here, right? I'm excited to see what he's going to do here because you got a couple of new toys, a couple of new prospects that can make things work, and I'm excited to see how it goes. You know, call me a Kool-Aid drinker, which I will always, always, always admit to, but I'm still excited about it anyway. You know, I love a good Oilers trade, and they made a couple of them back on Monday. Go ahead and rewind and listen to the reaction episode from the trade deadline. Other quick news, a little bit of housekeeping. Brad Malone back on waivers. Obviously, you have to clear a little space for the new guys, plus Ryan Nugent Hopkins returning. Brad Malone, we speak your name, sir. I thought that you played very, very well in your short run with the Oilers, and for that, I applaud you. You don't get a full one, though. You don't get a full one. You did your job. You did your job, and I applaud you for it. On the downside, however, I do have to report that Broberg, 
is hurt. He's off for at least a couple of weeks. According to Daniel Nugent Bowman from The Athletic, no surgery is required for Oilers prospect Philip Broberg. This is an ankle injury. He'll have to stay off the ice for at least a week or so. The organization's timeline for return to play is two to four weeks. That is rough, rough news for the Oilers, and also rough news for a guy that I thought had been playing quite well, to be honest. I thought he'd been playing quite, quite well. And you don't want to see it. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to read it. But the good news is no surgery required for Philip Broberg. Another thing I want to check in on as we get to get through the news is I want to get beyond the Edmonton Oilers. I want to look at another team that they're fighting for a playoff spot with, the Vegas Golden Knights. Well, that's how I feel about the Golden Knights. The Golden Knights got some bad news today. According to Frank Saravalli, the trade that was sending Dadanov out of town has been, uh, what do you call that? Revoked? Uh, not allowed to go through. Uh, the Gold Knights are cheaters. Uh, uh, I don't even know what you say about it. I don't even know what you say about it. But on deadline day, if you missed it, you don't know what I'm talking about. The Vegas Golden Knights traded Choke Me Dadanov to Anaheim, right? However, what they didn't know is that Anaheim was on the pre-existing no-trade list that he had from his days with the Senators. According to the National Hockey League, the NHL announced today that it has invalidated Monday's trade of player Evgeny Dadanov from Vegas to Anaheim. The trade could not be concluded because Dadanov's contract included a limited no-trade clause which had been complied with, which has not been complied with, meaning he had Anaheim on his no-trade. I wonder why. That's what I'd like to know. That's the question to me is why does Dadanov have Anaheim on his no-trade list? What have they done? Reveal the secrets. Do you not want to play for Dallas Akins? Do you enjoy donuts and ice cream and sugar and all the delicious things that we're going to get to in the good life portion of this podcast? Maybe. Or maybe you just don't want to go to Anna. Right? Either way, fuck Golden Knights. I'm tired of them. I really, really am. I'm tired of the Golden Knights because no matter what, they always seem to get things to go their way, and now they don't. And maybe that's just me being sneaky and me just being a Pacific Division opponent that I'm happy to see them fail, but you know what? You try to pull something sneaky and it's not going to work. The NHL bought uh, the NHL bit back. After reverting the Dadanov trade, the Vegas Golden Knights have only $405,833 in usable space in their LTIA LTIA salary pool. This is all according to our friends at Puckpedia. So, if they wanted to activate Martinez, they would need to find a way to clear 4.8 million bucks. If they want to find a way to activate Mark Stone, they're going to need to find a way to clear 9.09 million dollars. They currently have a roster of 26 listed. That's 15 forwards, nine defensemen, and two goalies. The point I'm getting here at, and I'm no math guy, but Vegas is fucked, cap-wise. So as we're complaining about the Oilers, and I'm going to do a little bit about that later, remember Vegas. You had a good time. You had a very good time. You made it to the Stanley Cup Finals in your first ever season. Then what happened? You borked it. You absolutely borked it. I'm not sad about it. Quite frankly, I feel like you deserve it. Quite frankly, you've been having way too much fun. Quite frankly... It just makes me happy. That's my evil laugh. One more for Vegas, having a bad time. Another thing I want to touch on just before we wrap up the news, again, this is for manscaped.com. Go to Manscaped, use the promo code BETTER20. BETTER20 to get 20% off your order and free shipping. To wrap up the news, I just want to look ahead at the Oilers' schedule. Since we last recorded on Monday, the Oilers have been outscored 8-5 to in their two games, but it wasn't all bad. That game against the Colorado Avalanche, the one that they got to overtime, is an OTL. is disappointing. Darnell Nurse's helmet got ripped off by Nazem Kadri. It was a whole thing. The ref problems in there. I don't want to get into it too much. The point here is that the Oilers found a way to hang with the best team in the NHL, and that's the takeaway that I had. 
that's the takeaway that I want to bring forward with me into tomorrow night's game against the Sharks, Calgary on Saturday, and beyond. You can play with the best teams in the league. You can play with them. You can dance with them. Everybody saw it. Now we just need to figure out some of the special teams. We need to get more depth scoring, even though it's been a, uh, it's been an asset lately. 3-2 OTL loss for the Edmonton Oilers against Colorado. That was on Monday after deadline day. On Tuesday, that was yesterday. This one made me upset. The Oilers were up 3-2 on the Dallas Stars with five and a half minutes left in the third period. And instead of closing out the win like champs, they shot themselves in the fucking foot. They shot themselves in the foot. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Dallas came roaring back. Two goals in 24 seconds. You all saw it. I'm not going to relive it. But instead of talking about two points or even one point in the second half of back-to-back set, we're talking about nothing because of sloppy, sloppy, sloppiness. I'm not going to go ahead and blame Miko for it. He did have a couple of goals I thought were questionable. I just think the team in front of him, team as a whole, in fact, they weren't tight enough on the details, especially in the third period when it mattered most, especially when they had a 3-2 lead with just over five minutes left. You can't give up two goals in 24 seconds. You can't. You can't do it ever. And it was one of those things where I'm just, it was it was just painful to live through. And it was painful for me as the second goal went in. At that point, there was about three and a half left to know what was going on. But, again, you take the point against Colorado. You do that all day. That was a hell of a hockey game yesterday. The execution was not there. And... It is what it is, right? Really, it is what it is. And tomorrow's an opportunity to rebound against a team that is well out of the playoffs. Saturday, we're going down to Calgary. Tickets, some tickets still available. BacksideTours.com is right there on the front page. Join us. But I hope there are some lessons from those two losses. Albeit they played reasonably well. Not perfect, of course, because they lost both. But... I hope there's something that they can take away from those because the five-on-five play was excellent. Special teams still a disaster, but we're getting there. And I believe in Woody. And I I, I assume you've all seen the graphic post-Woody, pre-Woody. The numbers were not pretty in favor of our first coach of the year. But now, well, we're doing all right. Manscaped.com, go get your beans clipped. Do it. Look good, feel good. That's what I say. Go to manscaped.com and use the promo code BETTER20 to get 20% off your order and free shipping. I promise your missus or your fella will love it. You'll love the, they'll love the attention to detail that you've been offering up when you're downstairs. Right? Of course. Manscaped.com, again, the promo code is BETTER. 20. Before debuting my new segment here, I just want to look ahead a little bit. As I mentioned, tomorrow the Edmonton Oilers play the San Jose Sharks. On Saturday, they play the Calgary Flams. We're going down to Calgary, and there's still a couple of spots left on our bus. If you want to get in on it, I recommend you do. Head on over to BacksideTours.com. Oilers Nation bus trip is right on the front page. Click it. Enjoy with us. I promise you're going to have a good time. I promise you're going to have a weird evening. A weird weekend, and we'll all have a great time. I'll be there. Tyler will be there. Jay will be there. Nation Dan is coming. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. Then beyond Calgary on Saturday, the Oilers have two winnable games to start off next week. They've got Arizona, and they've got Los Angeles. Both of those games at home. L.A., as I don't have to tell anybody if you're listening to this, that is a very important game for the Edmonton Oilers, one they have to have. Actually, I look at all four of these games, Sharks, Flames, Coyotes, Kings. What? Uh, You got to win all four? That's what I say because I'm selfish. But if you win three of four, I think you're doing okay. I think you're happy. Ultimately, you want to win four of four. You cannot walk away with less than four, five, six points out of here. You can't get anything less than four, five, six points. If that's the range... I think we're probably okay, especially since Vegas has absolutely sucked and they don't get their cap manipulation going on or whatever they were trying to do. They're in cap hell. So we're looking at the schedule. San Jose, Calgary, Arizona, LA. I say that those are four winnable games. 
and four games that I really, really want the team to have. Right? Of course. Now, I'm going to debut a new segment here on Better Late Than Never. I'm just going to call it The Good Life. Welcome to The Good Life. I'm gonna. I can't play very much of that song, or else I'm gonna get my podcast taken down because Sergey Brin and the folks at Google won't allow it go up on YouTube. Steve Jobs posthumously won't let it go up on the Apple Podcast. So the good life. Welcome to the good life. This is where we're gonna put all the grocery deals. This is where we're gonna talk about real life in here. It's gonna be a spinoff of the real life podcast I do on Mondays and Thursdays. This is where it's all gonna go. I'm gonna keep it real tight right now. But I did ask you guys a question of the week. I did ask you about some of the things going on in your life. And I'm pretty excited about it. So first things first, I wrapped up Inventing Anna on Netflix. That show was so fucking good. I still have yet to do a deep dive into Anna Sorokin's real life. Anna Sorokin? 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 I've yet to do the deep dive into her life. But man, she hustled, she grinded, and I loved a lot about it. Right? I really, really loved a lot about it. And that show was awesome. Now I'm looking for a new show. I need a new show on Netflix. I started watching Bad Vegan on the recommendation of my girlfriend's brother. So far, one episode in, I'm into it. One episode in, I'm into it. And I love me a good I love me a good docu-series. I'll say that. But if you got TV shows that I should be watching, hit me up. You guys know I love dating shows. You guys know I love reality shows. You guys know I love documentaries. I love stock market. I love weird tech. I love aliens. Hit me up with your recommendations. I just want to know what you're watching on Netflix. But the question for The Good Life today, the question that I posed to all of you on Twitter was, what is your guilty pleasure song? Or, World's Greatest Wednesday, what is the best pop song of all time? Welcome to The Good Life. And the answers that came in are excellent. And the reason that I was thinking about this, the reason that I was trying to figure out what the best pop song of all time is, is because I've got one that's stuck in my head right now, and I don't know what to do with it. Have you heard the song by Gail? A-B-C-D-E-F-U? It's been in my head for weeks right now, and it's one of those earworm pop songs that I absolutely love. I couldn't tell you a single other song this artist performs. I'm sure she's got an excellent catalog, but for me, A, B, C, D, E, F, U is wonderful. It's that one that goes, A, B, C, D, E, F, U, and your mom, and your sister, and your job, and your broke-ass car, and that shit you call art. That one? She just sounds super angry. I love it. I don't know. There's something about it that just I really, really, really enjoy. There's something I really enjoy about that one, and it just makes me happy. So I asked you guys, what is your guilty pleasure song? What is the best pop song? And I'm going to start off with my boy Waz. He sends in an absolute banger, and i got to give Waz some credit for this. Every Time We Touch by Cascada. Is that how you say it? Cascada? I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a soft day. Cascada. That is a hell of a track by Waz. And a great answer, I would say, also. Great, great answer. Sir Bear Brett says, Red Foo, Juicy Wiggle. What happened to those guys? Man, LMFAO, what was that, around 2016, 2017, somewhere in there? No, it had to be earlier than that. When were we all uh, party rocking? Every day I'm shuffling. I haven't been shuffling every day for a long time. When was that? I don't know the song by Red Foo, but Juicy Wiggle, where did those guys go? That's the question that I want to take away. Uh, the Mad Hatter says, Backstreet Boys, everybody. Do you do the dance? If you hear that song, come on. Do you do the dance? I think you kind of have to, right? I think you kind of have to. I don't know. Blue Bunny says, Lose Yourself. Eminem, such a banger. Is that a guilty pleasure pop song? Because if it is, I got problems. What I didn't realize, though, we talked about this Super Bowl weekend, Eminem performed. That song is now 20 years old, and it made me feel real, real old because it came out when I was in grade 11. Rosie says, it took me a while to come around to this, but Sugar by Maroon 5 is an all-time bop. I will not try to defend my taste. I don't know if I know that one. Which one is that by Maroon 5? I'm a Maroon 5 guy. I just find it interesting how their first couple albums, they were kind of like a pop rocky uh, type of band, and then they just went full pop, and then Adam Levine was on The Voice. 
I'm a huge Howard Stern guy. He played Purple Rain at Howard Stern's birthday in 2014. Absolutely wailed. Who knew that Adam Levine could shred like that? You know? F&M says, no one uses Stairway to Heaven for sports videos until now. Stairway to Heaven is not a guilty pleasure pop song. I refused to accept that. I'm a huge Led Zeppelin guy. Again, I've said this on my podcast before. My three favorite bands are The Beatles, Led Zeppelin, and Blink-182. And I understand that the three of them do not connect in any way, but I will not allow Stairway to Heaven to be listed as a uh, as a pop song or a guilty pleasure. Bobby Brizzle with a good one. Last Friday Night by Katy Perry. Always great. Nation Dan jumping in with Hit Me Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. Angus Hout over at Jets Nation. He says 22 by Taylor Swift slaps on another on another level. I'm feeling 22. So good. So good. Taryn says, I want you by Savage Guard. Who I want you, I don't know if I need you. So good. Jeff says, Black Cars by Gino Vanelli. I don't know that one. I don't know that one. Dangerous Wade, another great jam here. Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. One of my favorite stories ever, behind the scenes at Nation HQ. This happened whenever, whenever Shake It Off was a big song. So what year was that in? I'm going to Google it real quick here, and I'm going to vamp, and I'm going to talk, and I'm going to pretend that all of this was planned. So Shake It Off came out August 19th, 2014. So around that time in Nation HQ, our bookkeeper, Ronnie, who still works with us, she was having a bad day. It was one of those days where I don't remember exactly what was going on in her life or what was going wrong with work or something, something, something. There was details that I don't remember, but she was complaining about it and she was venting about it. And Jay, the squire, he stopped her dead in her tracks and said, Ronnie, I am not listening to any more of this until we get through all of Shake It Off. So we had to listen to the three minutes and whatever it is of Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. And then she was allowed to proceed with her work gripes. That is one of my favorite Taylor Swift Shake It Off moments. There you go, Dangerous Wade. Impromptu adrian says wannabe by the spice girls has to be up there that's just an all-time classic again i refuse to accept that as a guilty pleasure the juice oh man this is a great one tattoo do you remember them all the things she said all the things she said all the things she said run it through my head run it through my head so good that's a great pick that's a great pick. Jonathan says when i think about you i touch myself that actually used to be my ringtone for a long time for me missus Shout out to her. Uh, Nordic Superfan says, Barbie Girl by Aqua. All-time classic. Who doesn't love it? Kate says, I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys. Again, great jam. Nobody's having a bad time when I Want It That Way comes on. Mike Dursa. This is a interesting best pop song. Good Vibrations. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. You know, Marky Mark seems to have turned his back on his musical career, but I'll never forget. I'll never forget the Funky Bunch. I hope they're having a great day. Uh, Mike says, Billie Jean by MJ. Is that a, I mean, I'll take that as best pop song, but guilty pleasure. No, thank you. Sean Maloney says, Mbop by Hanson. All time classic. I really, really like that one. Shannon says, Ace of Bass. I saw the sign. I have that album. I got that uh, from Columbia House. In case you're wondering how old I am. Columbia House. If you don't know what that is, if you're a kid and you're listening to this, you go, bag milk. Tell me what Columbia House was. Well, basically what it was is you had a list and you picked out 30 CDs for a penny. So, right, 30 cents, you got 30 albums. But the catch was over the next three, four years or whatever it is, you had to buy albums that it was basically twice the price, if I'm being honest. I imagine I still owe Columbia House money, allegedly, in my opinion. Statute of limitations probably crossed at that point. But Columbia House, it was amazing they were around as long as they were. They would send you mystery albums, too. It was just like, hey, here's a CD in the mail that you might like. And if you opened it, you had to pay the $95,000 for it. And if you did, didn't want to risk it, you just sent it back. The last time I purchased, or I guess, well, I guess I purchased, was REM, Automatic for the People. That was my last mystery album from Columbia House, right? Who doesn't like that? Uh, last on the list... That is the list. So thank you guys so much for sending in your guilty pleasure slash best pop songs because the good life, that's where we're going to put this stuff. This is where we're going to improve people's lives. Grocery deals. I was at Save on or Safeway yesterday. Cheese is on sale. Welcome to the good life. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> so since we were talking about guilty pleasures, I looked up, what is a guilty pleasure? According to Oxford Dictionary, something such as a movie, television program, a piece of music that one enjoys despite feeling that is generally not held in high regard. So of all those songs that have come in, I don't see any of them as guilty pleasures. I don't see any of them as guilty pleasures. And if they are guilty pleasure for you, you own that shit. Own it. You deserve it. If those songs make you happy, I say you play them. I say you play them. I was also curious about what else is a listed as a guilty pleasure. What is listed as a guilty pleasure? So I Googled it. I said top t- top guilty pleasures in day-to-day life. And I pulled up. This is just the first site that came up. It is a site called Zipia. Z-I-P-P-I-A. I've never heard of this website before. But they're the first one that came up in my Google search. So I'm going to look at their list of 21 common guilty pleasures. And I'm going to give my take on their list. I have yet to look at this list. I don't know what it is, but I do see a list of 21 items here. I can already tell you that I've got beef with the first one. Ordering food for delivery. Is that a guilty pleasure? Or is that just me being lazy? Because I can tell you what I think. That's me being lazy. I have food in the fridge. I have food in the pantry. I have food in the freezer. I can make something. I'm just lazy. Not a guilty pleasure. Two, procrastinating. Is that a guilty pleasure? Who takes pleasure in the anxiety that comes from not getting your shit done? Again, I don't I, I don't see this as a guilty pleasure. If you are taking joy in procrastinating, you and I have got something going on. Binge watching reality shows. Now I can get all behind this. I just mentioned two seconds ago. 90 Day Fiance, y'all know I love it, right? Dating shows, super into it. Love and Bl- Love is Blind Season 2, fantastic. Too Hot to Handle, love it. I might even start watching the Too Hot, for Han- Too Hot to Handle from the other countries that are listed on Netflix. Like there's Brazil in there, I think. I might watch that. I assume they have either hilarious overdubs, which I would prefer, or at least subtitles. I'll figure that out. Uh, number four, eating a half gallon of ice cream. I'm not really a big, well... Before I say it, I I do love ice cream. Don't get me wrong. I love ice cream. I fucking love ice cream. But do I love ice cream to the point of going and eating a whole thing? Not really. Not a guilty pleasure for me. Snooping through other people's social media. That is my job. That is not pleasurable for me. Sleeping in late. You know what? That is not a guilty pleasure. If you want to sleep in, do it. If it's Sunday, fucking sleep until 2 o'clock. Scrolling TikTok, 100%. (laughs) I will lose hours of my life. I actually started recording this podcast that is filling your ear holes right now, about 30 minutes later than I was anticipating because I was scrolling TikTok. Watching your favorite children's movie as an adult. I just watched Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze last week. That is not a guilty pleasure. That is just a good nostalgia. Watching sappy romantic films. Who doesn't love a rom-com? Who doesn't love a rom-com? Friends with Benefits? Great great movie shout out to jt listening to a catchy song on repeat again we were just talking about music adding the song on repeat i don't think that's a guilty pleasure i just think that's when you got a jam and you're feeling it you're feeling it down to your bones you know where that shit is affecting you at a molecular level that is not a guilty pleasure 11 a glass of wine on a weeknight after work is that a guilty pleasure because we're living the red wine lifestyle here better late than ever, and I don't see that as a guilty pleasure at all. Reading the latest celebrity drama, well, accept that. Belting tunes out in your car, that is just day-to-day life. Taking selfies, do not do that. Conspiracy videos on YouTube. This one's for my boy Coomzy, I guess. Coomzy loves the conspiracy theories. He also loves to just read Wikipedia. So I'll give that to Coomzy. I don't personally do it. I don't remember the last time I watched a conspiracy video. Maybe early pandemic. I don't know. Eating cookie dough batter. I don't remember the last time I did that. Not a guilty pleasure for me, but if it is for you, I want to hear about it. Spending all Saturday at home in the pajamas. <laughs> Literally right now, it is 440 on a Wednesday and I'm wearing pajamas, but that's because I work from home. I'm a blogger. That's what I do. I go into the office a few days a week. I spend the rest of the time at home getting my shit done. And when I'm at home, if you think I'm going to put on real pants, well... That is just not happening. Overpriced lattes in the morning. Let me tell you a little secret. Every latte is overpriced. Greasy fast food. Had some yesterday. Not a guilty pleasure. An impromptu shopping spree. I'm not a big shopper. Gossiping with friends. Nah, this is a weak list. Sky Ariella wrote this list. Is a professional freelancer. I don't know that I buy your list. 
I don't think that these were all guilty pleasures. Gossiping with your friends, that is just called talking to your friends about life. Impromptu shopping spree, what if you need something? I'm not a big shopper, though. You know, greasy fast food, who doesn't want nugs? Or donair, or a combination of nugs and donair? I could see that as a guilty pleasure, especially if you're trying to cut calories, watch your waistline. Personally, I am not, so I'm going to eat them cheeseburgers, right? Welcome to the good life. Next week's question, I'm going to throw it out to there, throw it out to all of you early because now that the good life segment is up and running, I want to know what's your most embarrassing moment in the last 12 months of your life? It could be something small. You spilled coffee on yourself at work in front of a room full of people. Maybe you shit yourself on your way to a date. Whatever it is, I want to know the most embarrassing moment from the past 12 months in your life. Hit me up either on Twitter, JSBM Bag Milk, in the voicemail. Same link as always. That's in my link tree. Send me an email, bagmilk at oilersnation.com. I just want to know. I want to know what you're living Welcome through. To the good life. Oh. I want to know what you're up to, and I want to know what you're living. So there you go. The good life. The first ever edition? Segment? I'll bring this back every now and then once I've got some better rhythm of it going on. Again, next week, what is the best, or I guess what is the most embarrassing, it's the best to me because I'm going to find it entertaining, but what is the most embarrassing moment in your, last, in your life over the last 12 months? I'd love to know. Caution, this podcast may contain traces of cheese and cherries. And with that, back to our regular programming. Before we get to the voicemail, I want to get to a couple of clips I didn't get to in the news here. Waz just sent me a couple of different things throughout the week, and there was one that I wanted to play from Brett Kulak, talking about what it means to him to come back to his hometown Edmonton Oilers. This is the kind of shit I love. This is the kind of shit that feeds me. This is the kind of player that this whole city can get behind, provided that he's not a total schlub, which I know he will not be. Here's Brett Kulak. Yeah, just talking to my dad earlier, he's a little emotional, and it kind of, you know, that's the team I grew up as a kid idolizing and talking about and wanting to watch all the time. And... Who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love to hear a guy from his hometown just outside the city on a farm coming back and being that excited to play? Right? A big gamble that we did obviously get through at the trade deadline was Ken Holland did not make any adjustments to his goaltending. When asked about it on the broadcast the other night, here's what he said. Yeah, I think when both goalies are healthy, I'm comfortable with our goaltending. You know, it's been over two and a half years, I think. Are you though, Ken? Again, I'm not hanging last night's loss to Dallas on Miko Koskinen, but that was one of those nights where, man, I really wish he could have got a save. At the other end of the ice, Ottinger finished with an 880, and yet our goaltender was somehow below that. Again, not Nico's fault. A lot of issues in front of him. But it's, it's interesting by Ken Holland, right? That uh, the goaltending has been really designed so that they're, they're sort of 1A and 1B. Um, and I just said to you, I think we've added $612,000 of cap space. Math. And we're, we are snuggled within a thousand or two. We've got room to, to kind of call up one player, just if we need to call up, obviously, uh, if you have an injury, whether it's a goalie or, uh, you know, uh, one of those forwards or defensemen down there. So we didn't have a lot of space. And uh, I guess for me, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable that, uh, um, that when we've got the tandem together, that they give us good goaltending. We'll see. Both guys played okay the last two games. I thought Mike Smith was all right against Colorado. None of the three goals that went in I thought were necessarily horrible by any means. I mean, on the first play to uh, – on the first goal against against Colorado, maybe. Different play, but, you know, it is what it is. Last night I thought Miko could have been better. Again, not all his fault. Team in front of him needs to be better, especially when they're up by a goal in the third period, you know. But uh way she goes sometimes. That's the way she goes sometimes. Well – it is now time to get to your favorite or most hated <laughs> segment on the podcast as we get to the Rig Hand Distillery voicemail. If you go to RigHandDistillery.com, there's a tour and tasting coupon right there that you can print off the website. I encourage you to do it. I say it on the Bcast all the time. Check out the facility out in Nisku. Go get yourself a little taster. Buy yourself something delicious, provided you're a legal drinker age. 
Again, RickHandDistillery.com. That's where you need to go. That's where you need to be. That's where I want you. Got it? RickHandDistillery.com. Check them out on socials as well. Rickhand Spirits and Rick Hand Distillery on Twitter and Instagram. Now, this I'm going to preface by saying the voicemail is changing because I have not gotten this much email or feedback about a segment in the 13 prior episodes I've done of this podcast than I did after last week's podcast about the voicemail. You, all of you, want me to take more control over the messages. If things get ro- if things go long, you want me to cut them off. If people are getting weird, you want me to tell them off. This is your segment of the podcast, so I try not to touch anything, but we got some beef going out there, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. I'm looking forward to seeing where we end up here in the voicemail, but we're going to give it a go. Again, I've got a lot to get through. I've got about 20 voicemails here, and maybe I'll listen to them all. Maybe I don't. We'll see how it goes in this first round. All right, so a couple of things here. First off, uh, what are your thoughts on the Oilers trade deadline? Um, since by the time we're listening to this, it'll be past the trade deadline. Um, the second thing is more so of a comment here um, is I'm kind of wondering if this Mike Smith getting a leash deal is more so of a kind of like a money ball situation uh, where maybe Ken Holland is just saying too bad to Jay Woodcroft, like, Suck it up. You are playing Mike Smith. I'm sending Stu back down to Baco, um, even though we all know that Skinner should be getting that opportunity. Um, First off, trade deadline reaction. Did one on Monday. Was that the deadline? Monday. So check that out. Give the full reaction. But to give it a letter grade, I'd give it a C. That's still a pass, but it's just over the line. I didn't expect the Oilers to do a whole lot. They did not do a whole lot. But the players that they brought in, I think, are going to help. I really like Kulak, to be honest. I know the cost of acquisition is a little steep. Nobody wanted to pay the second either this year or next, depending on how the conditions go. But I think he's going to help, and I'm excited to see him. And if he re-signs at a reasonable deal here at Edmonton, which is, you know, hometown boy, maybe we won't care about the second. As for Mike Smith... I don't even know what to say anymore. It's just, it really is, it's the weirdest thing to me. It really is the weirdest thing to me about how much leash he's gotten. Maybe Ken Holland did just say you got to play him, and that's the move, and maybe that's where it is, but it's not what I do. I'd have Stuart Skinner here, just like you said. Mr. Milk, how are you doing? This doing is well. a polar bear. It's not polar bear. Just calling uh I'm guessing the trade deadline's either come or passed or whatever's going on with that by mm-hmm. the time you hear this. But I, I just thought I'd ask, uh, hopefully you'll say something about the one that's just coming up. But um, a favorite move from the past, uh, deadlines that we've had. I think number one for me is probably Rollison in 06. That was a spicy I was, like, one. just old enough to really start getting into the Oilers when uh, – if you remember correctly, Roley, they traded a first-round pick for a 30-whatever-he-was-at-the-time-year-old goalie. Could you imagine if they did that now? Fuck, Twitter would erupt. We had that big run, and it was love at first sight, really, and heart broke as a, a wee lad, but that's how it is sometimes, you know? And um, I think another one on the other side that I least favor would probably be when we traded Smith. I can, I can remember crying my eyes out in my gym class. <laughs> And I heard that he got uh, traded away. So, anyway, I just want to hear maybe maybe you're going to say something that just happened this last deadline. Like, I think that Ryan Smith, obviously that's the reason. If you listen to the Wanya interview a couple episodes back, that's the reason why we're all here. That's the reason I'm doing this podcast right now. So, Ryan Smith, as much as that was a horrific day, I took the day off work to watch the trade deadline as I used to do back then. And he got traded right at the buzzer, and I will hate Eklund for it forever. Mr. Milk, it's Polar Bear again. Hello, um, Polar Bear. I just wanted to I love that name, ask you a question about what you thought about these no-move clauses mm. and uh, these no-trade uh, lists that people are making for teams. Go on. I think we need to start making some noise about how BS this is and how many players are saying, oh, I don't want to go to Edmonton. I, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to finish off this clip, and then I'll give my take. Blah, 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 like. Come on, man. If hockey really is a business, 
Take this out of it. Really look at these players as assets. And when they're here, let's fall in love with them and they're not assets anymore. But some guy on the other side of the pond or whatever, down in uh, the States, just saying, no, I don't want to go to Edmonton, blah, blah, blah. I live in New York. Like, oh, look at me kind of thing. Like, that's, I think, what upsets people the most. And I think that's what takes out the um, the actual possibility sometimes for a guy like Holland or whoever in the past to make moves and really improve this team is because people can just have this opt out of like, no, I don't want to go there. And I, I understand if it's for family reasons. Like I, I totally get that. But like at the same time, man, when you sign the contract and you want to play in this league, you got to be professional about some of these things, you know? I completely agree. So here's my take on no moves. If you've asked for a trade, your no move should be void. If you want out of the place that you signed at, your no trade should be void. I think it's bullshit when somebody says, I want you to trade me, and then they give a list of two or three teams. Like, what the fuck is this? I get there are times where you should have a no move. Maybe you're an older guy and you got family and you've got roots in a spot. That makes total sense to me. But we also need GMs to stop giving these things out like candy on Halloween because it's just preventing cool shit from going on in a league that really needs cool shit to happen. No trade clauses absolutely suck. I also think that a player shouldn't get even the opportunity, not even a sniff, not even a <laughs> no sniff of a trade of a no-move clause until they've hit, I don't know, X number of games. I don't know what that plateau is, but something, because it just doesn't make sense to me. I agree with Polar Bear. Also, since we're on the topic of pop, I just want to say shout out to Avicii, one of the goats of pop. I know he's EDM, but he he was honestly one of the best artists of our time. Uh, it's a shame he died. Uh, fun fact, back in broadcasting school, when we did our radio shows at Nate, uh, the day Avicii died, I went to go tell the person who was, who was on air. I was like, Av- Avicii died, you should tell people. And she was like, Who's Avicii? And I almost lost my mind. That that broke my heart because Avicii. I, I, how do you not know who Avicii is? Anyways, I uh, love the podcast. I love talking music. I probably, I'm probably going to send another voicemail, by the way. Uh, so, Waz, if you're wondering why your voicemails are showing up here out of order, it's because I just, I just, there's a little feature on my soundboard where it just kind of randomized everything. So, I don't know which message that was supposed to be in or what order it was supposed to be in, but there's Waz checking in. Loved Avicii. I don't know about the fun fact there on that Avicii story that was. Love you, pal. Sir Milk of the Bagged Variety. Mm hmm. Hello, sir. Hello. First things first, Presto, buddy, you got to get your own podcast or something. <laughs> I understand that it's probably pretty boring in Saskatchewan, hence the excessive voicemails. All right. But it's overly redundant and not at all necessary. Consolidate all right, all right. your thoughts. Okay. Presto, Maybe, I don't know. Learn a lesson. Wait till Monday to do your shtick, and then you'll be able to put it up your abs straight up. Merchant for gags on the arch. From there, uh, there we go. Now we're Merchant for gags on the arch. for abs straight up. Bring back abs. I love Gagne all to death, but uh, Everly was a strict money move. I don't believe that that was actually. Wow. I know he had a poor performance in the cup run, but oh, wait. let's bring abs back. Anyways, Bag Milk, fantastic show, sir. Uh, yeah, just uh, wanted to add a little levity and keep up the good work, my friend. I love Ebbs. That trade that sent him out of town, Jordan Eberle for Ryan Strom to save quote unquote cap space. Peter Shirelli was out of his mind. He didn't do anything with the cap space, if you remember correctly. Jordan Eberle should probably still be here. Would I want to trade him back or get him back? Sure, of course. Would the Seattle crack and take Josh Archibald to do it? Absolutely not. <laughs> Doggy Volley, if that's you, I cannot play that music, my friend. That's the kind of shit that gets you pulled off Apple Podcasts. Hello, friends. It's me again, Ken2112, with more input, when you don't want it from, (laughs) from these douchebags. Have fun with bag milk and (laughs) this guy. Cheers. (laughs) That's an aggressive bumper, but I like it. The internet is an amazing thing. Uh. I've just been listening to Internet Radio with KWS uh-huh. by Ken2112. Yeah. 
Even Chewbacca doesn't even listen to that. <laughs> Stop it. Chewbacca didn't have <laughs> to be on here. Whatever. <laughs> Stop it. Wreck, wreck. Here we go. That is a knockoff Chewbacca. It was not actually Chewbacca, George Lucas Films, or I guess Disney. You know? It wasn't him. It just wasn't. Bag Milk, greatest pop songs of all time. You're talking my language. I won't lie. I have a soft spot for pop. It's kind of like my guilty pleasure when it comes to music. Uh, I won't lie. Big fan of Shakira. Personally, like Ooh. whenever, wherever, over hip. I was going to say, I wonder which one Waz is into. Uh, whenever, wherever is a great smash, but hips don't lie. You know, underneath your clothes, Waz, come on. Underneath your clothes, there's an endless story. Don't lie. Hot and Cold by Katy Perry is a classic. Great. Uh, recently, Good for You by Olivia Rodrigo. I think that was my most played song of 2021. Don't ask why. Me too. Uh, Levitating song. by Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa is honestly has some great pop songs recently. She really does. liking her music. And honestly, Rihanna's Disturbia was a jam back then. It mm-hmm. still is. Uh, International Love by Chris Brown and Pitbull. How about that? That's That's always a fun one to listen to. And, uh, you know, I just found that pop in the early 2010s, late the 2000s early was so good. I absolutely love listening to it on the radio. Um, yeah, there's probably a low like, lists and a loads of others I can list off right now. Was in my day, when I was in high school, when I was in grade 10, 11, 12, pop punk was the jams. The jams of all jams. So I feel like I grew up in the perfect time for pop music because pop punk was where I was at. Blink-182, Newfound Glory, Sum 41, Good Charlotte, all that shit. I loved it, and I still listen to it now even though I'm way too old. Frankly, I would still wear a studded belt unless it, if it didn't break. I had a studded belt up until about two years ago when I think Frank might have eaten it or at least pulled it apart. I'm going to blame Frank because I don't remember what happened to it. This one goes out to the rather caffeinated Mr. Presto. You don't know my voice messages. <laughs> Why don't you kick off your shoes, relax, light up a cigar, a bit of your favorite whisker, and listen to Better Late Than Never. So as I mentioned before we got into the voicemails, the voicemail has caused the most feedback of anybody of any segment I do on this podcast. And Presto got some heat after last week. Donkey Valley's gotten some heat just because he submits so many. Personally, I like both guys. I mean, they both can run a little bit long. And that's why I promised you that I'm going to shut guys off if it gets a little bit too long, you know? But we're learning. We're learning. Hey, Bag Milk. What's up? This is the kid. Oh, hello, big kid. Did you know that cheese mm. is the most stolen food commodity in the world? Hang on. I gotta, I gotta wrap my head around that. Cheese is the most stolen food commodity in the world. Let me think it through. Well, makes sense. One, fucking delicious, right? Two, nachos. Three, there's some protein in cheese. Everybody loves it. There's some calcium. There's some vitamin D, right? This makes sense to me. Plus, as we've discussed for 14 episodes now, cheese, insane expensive. Makes sense to me. Continue on, sir. Thought you might like that. I did like that. As a fellow lactose lover, Uh I'll share the facts. But anyways, back to the Oilers. I know that the trade deadline's come and gone. Let's get to it. We're still wondering what to do with Tyson Berry. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be gone in the summer. What are your thoughts? about shifting Tyson Berry up and having him be a top nine forward for the Oilers. I don't, I just can't see a scenario where that happens. Like I know there's a couple of players that have happened, had it happen. The most famous one is Brent Burns. Probably the Oilers just played a dude. Uh, what's the fucking guy that fought Cassie and he's a defenseman that moved up. It just, I, I think here's what I think that's going to happen with Barry. I think that he's going to be traded this off season. So that was last night was what game 64. I think Barry's gone this offseason. And that's because we're seeing Bouchard is better at being Barry than Tyson Barry is being at Barry. Right? That's just my thoughts. That's my thoughts. Move him up to forward? Nah. Let's just move on in general. How's that? Hello, it's me, Virologist Man. Here to talk <laughs> geopolitics and science. But first... <laughs> nope. Actually, one song I need to mention, Bag Milk, Go ahead, is... Buddy. 
this is what dreams are made of by Hilary Duff from the Lizzie McGuire movie. I know you might be a little too old for that one, but How it's an dare you was. bop. Uh, honestly, Disney Channel music back then, like Hannah Montana, the Jonas Brothers, it hit different <laughs> back then. Uh, high School Musical as well, so I know you might be a little too old for that stuff. You know, back- How dare you? I'm not going to allow you to be ageist on my podcast, Was Talking about Lizzie McGuire and Hilary Duff. That's why Wanye thinks you're 12. I love you, pal. Please keep leaving voice messages. We can talk about Hillary Duffy Dallas. Yeah, nah, just a couple of questions for you, mate. Um, oh, hello, mate. If you have a kid, right? are you going to change your handle to Bag Dilf? <laughs> and that's probably not as funny as I thought it was a couple of seconds ago. I like also, it. Also, uh-huh. just looking at the latest clip from... Oilers Nation on Insta. Mm -hmm. Do you reckon Tyler has what it takes to be a professional eye model? Like, he's got fucking good eyes, eh? Well, there's two things. Begged Dilf, yes. That will absolutely happen. Ladies love me. Right, ladies? I know you do. Same with you fellas. Don't think you're getting out of this. Uh, Could Tyler be an eye model? I think Tyler could be a model of any variety. What you don't know is that not only does he have beautiful eyes that I like to stare at on the regular, but if you pop that tarp off, he is a string bean of sexiness. You get Tyler without his clothes on, all of a sudden time stands still. So could he be an eye model? Yes. Could he be a model for any garment ever invented? Also yes. Hey, Twig and Berries, I know you don't sponsor this podcast, but you do sponsor the other one, Real Life Podcast that I'm on with Tyler. If he's not a model for you, by the end of this season or next, we have all failed, Tyler. Could he be a model? Without question. Dear loyal subject bagged milk. Go on. It's me, the queen. Mm -hmm. Have you been to Paddy's Cheese on 125th Street yet? You should stop taking wine and cheese advice from the peasants. (laughs) <laughs> and more from the pros like Paddy's cheese. You don't get amphetamine advice from randoms, do you? No, Maybe you I would. go to Tyler, who loves the amphetamines. <laughs> he Talk doesn't. to the pros. He doesn't. Tyler does not like amphetamines. <laughs> he does not. That was a that was a fake that was a fake voicemail. Uh, I will check out this cheese place. What was it called? Patty's on 125th Street. I'll check that out. I'll Google that. I love cheese. I love red wine. I bought myself a wine skin that I cannot wait to fill with something delicious on my way to Calgary. You know, I'm just going to carry it with me. Even if I don't drink on the bus, I might just have a little sippy sip when we get to Red Deer. Stop for some snacks. You know, who doesn't want to carry a nice cab salve with them? You know, but Patty's, I'll check that out. I will check that out. Also, please don't ever hesitate to give me your wine and cheese recommendations. Despite what the Queen of England just said, I'm taking all recommendations. Just slide on into them DMs. Hey, Bag Milk Flute here. Flute! Uh, First of all, I just wanted to thank you and all the boys at Oilers Nation for producing so much content this year. Hmm. I recently moved from Edmonton to Vancouver, and you guys have really kept me engaged in the Oilers fandom, then I really appreciate it. Uh, I just wanted to speak on the deadline acquisitions real quick. Go ahead. Um, I know you guys have touched on it, but I'm really sick of the Evander Kane is as good as a deadline acquisition talk. Me too, brother. Uh, Darnell Nurse gets a $5 million raise next year. We need to re-sign Pooley RV and Yamamoto. If there was a year to go for it, this is it. We're not going to have those three players under two mil each next year. And I think Ken Holland really fucked up not not going for it this year. It's going to be a really hard time to sign players next year. <sighs> I have the same concern. I have the same concern. Ken Holland had a lot of money to spend last year, last summer, that is, and he did not spend it well. Duncan Keith, he's been fine. He's been fine. But the cost of acquisition and the price on the books, not fine. Let's say you shaved a million or a million and a half off Duncan Keats' contract and made Chicago withhold that at the time of the deal. 
you don't think you could have done something with a million or a million and a half extra dollars over and above what they got done? That is an extra player right there. Or instead of Derek Brassard, you combine his half-eaten salary, which is the 450-something, whatever it was, plus that with the additional 1.5 you have, and all of a sudden you can go get a $2 million player? Come on. I don't get it. I really don't get it. It bothers me. It annoys me. I don't understand why we're spending the money way we, way we are. I don't understand why we're gambling on the goaltending again. And I don't get it. And since you brought Yamamoto up, there's some people that want to trade him. I don't think that they should be traded. He's got six goals in his last seven. He's turning into a pest. And actually, when he was asked about being that pest and trying to annoy the other players on the other team, this is what he said, and I loved it. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to get under their skin. They're trying to get under mine. Um, I think I got under it a little bit, but um, obviously they got the better of us, so I didn't do a good enough job tonight. I love that. The kid's playing. The kid's playing. If they could find a way to bring back Evander Kane, I'd also have time for that. I want Jesse Pugliarvi back. But how are you going to do it? You're going to have to clear out Cassian. You're going to have to clear out Barry. Who else you got that's got a bloated contract down there? You're going to hope Keith maybe retires. If those three things happen, if you can get rid of two of those three, maybe even three of three if you got an ideal world, then all of a sudden the Oilers have got opportunity to make moves again next year and we can try this again. Do I trust Ken Holland to be the person to do that? I do not. So I am with you. I'm frustrated about deadline day. We're in year seven of McDavid, year eight of Drysaddle. We should be doing more than depth players. We should be doing more. Most importantly, the message I took away from that is that you like my podcast. For that, I thank you. So this is a hockey-related voicemail. Just a quick question for you. Uh, back around the late 2000s, was there a rumor that Yermo Yager was going to sign with the Oilers? I remember hearing that back when I was in, like, sixth grade. Some kid on my soccer team said the Oilers might sign Yager, this legend from Europe. So uh, was that a thing? Cause I know last week you were talking about Yager. Oh, that's my boy Waz again. I don't remember exactly what the deal was, but there was rumors or rumblings or chatter or something like that that Yager wanted to come play with Hemsky in Edmonton. And I don't know if that was as a UFA or if they were talking trade. So that was a long time ago. But absolutely, there was something to it. There was something. There was some connection between Yager and Hemsky there, was, And it didn't happen. didn't come to fruition. But that was one of those ones that had Oilers fans going, what if, what if, what if, you know? Mary Hosa all over again. Hey, Bag Milk. It's the kid again. What's up? Thought I'd answer some of your questions that you were looking for. Please do. Deadline recap in a sentence? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. It happened again. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. Now, all that means is it happened again is we don't have any cap space to do anything. That's right. And we're not in a position to send out first round picks. So, well, we oh, are, no, but it, it didn't. again is really why does this keep happening again? What I would say about the first round picks thing is that listen, they are in a spot to send out first round picks, they just don't want to. You look at teams that are going for it, they're sending out first round picks. If you're good, that first rounder is going to be low 20s. All of a sudden, is it that valuable? We're not talking about lottery picks anymore. Anyway, continue the kid. Did Ken Holland do enough? You know what? He did all he could with. I agree Whatever. With that. Didn't have much room. Useless. Not a lot to trade. Understanding that he has of how the NHL works. <laughs> no, he didn't do enough. <laughs> However, go ahead. I still don't think that we were a loser on deadline day. Doesn't I don't mean think we're so. a winner. I don't think we were losers. But we weren't a loser. We weren't a losers. We're more. But the most important the topic, I really think, world's greatest pop songs. Yeah, hit me. If you're putting a list together. Yeah. And it does not include any songs from the legendary band Aqua. Oh, yeah. We have Barbie Girl. That's a shame. Barbie Girl's a classic. Cartoon Heroes is probably the best song ever. Ooh, that is a good one. I hadn't heard. Shout out Aqua. I hadn't heard Cartoon Heroes in a long time. See you later, Bag Milk. Hey, thanks for calling in the kid. Please leave more messages. My favorite Aqua song, if we're going to go down this road, is probably Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones, calling Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones, get up now, work up now. I just like the dynamic between the lady and the bald fella. You know? I like it. I liked it a lot. Good list. Good list by the kid. Last voicemail of the week. Bag milk, presto. 
Ah, the pasta. deadline was underwhelming for the Oilers, it was. excellent for others. Mm-hmm. Did Ken do enough? Uh, he didn't have much money, but no, I don't think he did enough. With everybody else in our division so big and strong, um, our defense is just too weak. There had to be a Barry trade or or something, even even if you have to give up Fogel to make sure you could get another big, hard defenseman. I do wonder if... So I'm not taking a shot at Warren Fogel here, so don't... So what I'm about to say may sound like it, but I don't mean it that way. I do wonder if the Oilers are going to cut bait on Fogel this summer, not because they don't like the player and the hustle and all that shit, but they need a guy with a little bit more finish. He's making, what, 2.7, 2.75, something like that? I'm doing this off the top of my head. But he's somewhere in that window, and I just wonder if they would rather spend that money on a guy who can maybe score a little bit more consistently. I like the way he hustles. I like the way he grinds. I like the way he's kind of in the mix all the time, but... There's something to be desired there with Warren Fogle. There's something there. No, I don't think he did. Um, but seeing as he stayed within his limits, what he did do, I actually think was okay. I think Kulak will be a good add. I just actually hope they try him out on the second line above above Keith. because I don't think it's going to be very long until he moves himself up there, Presto. He's getting burned wide all the time. I know he's a plus player right now, but he's really looking like he's slowing down. Uh, just since you brought that up, one of my favorite things from last offseason, if you remember, is the Duncan Keith quote of, we'll see who's a step behind or whatever it was, you know, I'm paraphrasing. And not Mimamoto on Instagram has been using that all year long. It makes me laugh every time. Uh, the pop song? Well, the one I like is Take On Me by AHA because I am old as balls. It's a classic. Um, gotta say that loss last night was pretty disappointing, especially when you look at uh, the social media and you see guys blaming it on Cassian and Shore. The only thing on this team, I'll say it again, that has not improved under the new coach is the power play. I know Nude isn't on the power play, but with Connor McDavid, Kane, everybody they have, there is no reason this power play is as bad as it is. And they score with that power play with eight minutes left. They bury that team and the game would most likely have been over. I am just saying the power play is not good enough. Gullickson needs to go, whether it's now or in the offseason. He's just not able to adapt because everybody seems to have been able to adapt to our power play. Have a good day. Ciao. Oh, the power play. I mentioned the special teams a little bit earlier in the podcast. They are vexing to me. I don't understand what's going on with the power play or the PK for that matter. And it's the Oilers are looking so good at five on five and their special teams are failing them. Like Presto said, you get a power play goal last night and all of a sudden the game is out of reach. All of a sudden the stars, they get two goals in 24 seconds, but they're still either tied or down. And that just didn't happen. And for me, it's just... Uh, it's so frustrating how something that was an absolute position of strength for this team is all of a sudden turned into a fucking disaster. But it is what it is, and that's why Rig Hand Distillery says you got to keep doing the voicemails. The Rig Hand Distillery voicemail. Checking in every week on your thoughts on the podcast. Hit me up the link tree in my bio on Twitter and Instagram. That's how you get to the voicemail. Or it's in the article in Oilers Nation where this podcast goes live there shortly after I'm done recording. RickHandDistillery.com. That's where you find the tour and tasting coupon I've been telling you about. I promise you're going to enjoy it. There you go. Another round of voicemails in the book for my friends at our Rig Hand Distillery. I've got my bottle of Double Double sitting beside me as always. I wish I was making a coffee, but it's too late. Maybe I'll have some ice cream later. Maybe I'll have some ice cream and I'll put some of that on there. It'll be delicious, wouldn't it? If you want to leave a voicemail, the link is in my bio on both Twitter and Instagram. Super easy. I'll play all of them. I'll mix them up. But you know, today I will cut you off. You run a little bit long. So we're going to make that change going forward. As always, I've got to give another shout out to my friends at Arcadia Brewing. Check them out. ArcadiaYeg.com. Arcadia Brew Co. on Twitter. Arcadia Brewing Co. on Instagram. And lastly, I want to know your thoughts feedback i want to know your thoughts on the new segment the good life that we launched today presented by manscaped go to manscaped.com pick up a package use the promo code better 20 make sure that your beans are showroom ready you want to show the world well let's get those babies dolled up maybe a nice design in there lightning bolt shave bag milk in there that look nice i think everybody would enjoy that so would you so I want to thank, again, Arcadia, I want to thank Righand. I want to thank Manscaped, and most importantly, all of you for welcoming me into your life. I know you don't have a lot of time, but giving me an hour of your day is very, very appreciated.
by myself. And the only reason this podcast is growing the way it is is because all of you are participating. If you want to know, I've said that a few times on a few different podcasts, my goal has been surpassed about five, six, seven times by the end of the year. So I had a year-end goal. It's surpassed, thanks to your support, five, six, seven times on this podcast. So with that, the bragging is out of the way. The voicemails are out of the way. We're talking pop songs. We're talking Oilers. Better late than never. Episode 14.